Okay, so I'm uh, really, really delighted to introduce you to uh, Yoshiki Hayashi-san. Um, he is the uh, founder of NGO called Small Earth, which is um, located in very rural Chiba, um, called Kamogawa, or near Kamogawa. And um, as I said, it's not that far from Tokyo, but it feels very remote. And that's because this area is sort of down in the peninsula, so it was quite difficult to get to. So some of the things have been preserved quite well uh, until recently. Um, but um, he will tell you all about this. Um, I've seen his um, lecture yesterday, had a sneak preview, and it's just wonderful. So um, you're in for a real um, treat. And, uh, and, and the lecture will be followed by Q&A session with um, Takeshi Hayatsu, who is uh, based here, a Japanese architect. And uh, thank you again for um, Toto Europe for sponsoring our event. And, uh, and um, yeah, so um, really happy that um, Ms. Um, Mr. Hayashi can be here in person, which is very, very special. So that's it. Thank you. Start. I'm from Kamogawa, Chiba, all the way. Uh, thanks very much for inviting me, to, uh, Yuki. 24 years ago, I started living in Satoyama in Kamogawa, Chiba. I'm going to tell the story. It's a bit like a movie, so just enjoy. I'm showing you two films to start with. This is my village. Look. Yes, beautiful, isn't it? My village. Uh, has a history of uh, 1,300 years of rice uh, came from uh, China uh, via Southeast Asia. And uh, people um, uh, felled trees and uh, uh, built uh, uh, terraced rice fields, a village. Uh, we produce rice just using uh, rainwater. So Japanese people uh, used uh, uh, rivers, uh, but uh, we, our village can't do that, so we use rainwater only. This is a sacred place. Most hottest uh, day of the summer, we danced for rain, praying for rain, and we have a dragon in the sacred place. The dragon is a reincarnation of water. The dragon is watching over us in the village, and we dance for praying for rain. We still have these stories, godly stories. A wonderful dragon, you see. So, all these different gods or deities are coming from Eurasia uh, in, uh, are sitting here. Two others are from Tokyo. You see this tradition. I still have this village, historical village. Villagers said, if you dance, you get rain. Why? 
Yes, of course. If you dance, you get rain. So you have these divine stories. I was touched and moved. Only two hours from Tokyo, we have this uh, landscape, Japanese landscape, supported by people in the 70s and 80s. The average uh, age of Japanese farmers is 68. 3% of the population are farmers, and uh, tens of thousands of people are leaving farming each year. Uh, we only produce 30% of uh, food, and, and we have low energy dependency, uh, sustainability. It's a vulnerable society, and this uh, beautiful landscape, beautiful landscapes are disappearing from across the nation. We, what we do is. Villagers, uh, we started a, a terrace rice uh, owning a scheme uh, with Muji. Uh, we built a, a rice a trust uh, to protect the village uh, in collaboration with cities. You know, uh, Muji has uh, shops in London. Uh, we started to work with them in uh, 2017 to uh, work in the through this trust, working with uh, these old people and uh, people who came from the cities. We welcome uh, people from the cities. 10 million people live in Tokyo, oh, including the surrounding area. One third of the Japanese population live in the Tokyo area, uh, we create a place for them to come back. Children play. They swim in the rice fields. Hundred years ago, 90% of the Japanese population was working in agriculture, but people went to cities. That's why I, uh, I want people to get involved in agriculture, uh, uh, even if it, that is a uh, uh, leisurely activities. Uh, we can use a uh, rice paddy uh, clay to uh, make this uh, uh, um, bowls, and uh, rice becomes sake. So um, urban children are coming over here. And now, corporates and also universities, high schools, kindergartens, so many people are coming here and uh, we all um, do collaboration. And, and actually, architects are the most population. Also, um, un five universities, um, we actually work with five universities um, in the architecture field. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the village to、uh, rejuvenate the village, a bunch of architects and designers contributed so much to rejuvenate this、uh, little village in the mountains. I learned this technique from、uh, the elderly people in the village. And I teach that technique to the people coming from the cities. But these techniques are arranged and adjusted to the modern time by my colleagues. So it takes about a whole day in a very traditional way. But my designer colleagues. Adapted to create an easier way for more people to、um, participate. Next month, I am going to Muji, major shops of Muji in Tokyo, to have workshops. And I want to connect the rural area and the urban areas. And that would change the landscape and attitude of the city. So, this is tra a traditional agriculture method learned from the elderly people in the village. And、uh, so, a bunch of us are creating and protecting the rice fields. So this is an was an un, this is such an unknown village, but we have one thousand visitors a year. But the government policy do not protect. Agriculture. So, and more and more people are giving up agriculture each year. The average hourly salary is 200 yen, which is a pound, a pound an hour. So, nobody would want to take over your parents' agriculture business. So, but I think this village is really precious, and I want to pass this great environment to the next generation, to the future. So, why did I move there 24 years ago, and why am I doing this? And I want to tell you a story. So, I am I am running this organization called Small Earth. So、um, this presentation is about、um, this organization, and there are four chapters, starting with why Kamogawa, two, what I do in Kamogawa, three,、um, about the activities of Small Earth, four, looking back the last twenty-four years, and、uh, I want to tell you what I、um, think is the most important. So why did I come to live in、uh, Kamogawa? I liked drawing when I was a child. You you can see some sort of vision when you want to、um, do a drawing, and you transfer the vision onto a piece of paper. So there was something that changed my life. I was seven years old. It was the 
Hoshi no incident, and that caused a huge trauma to myself. Uh, the first day of my uh, second year of my ele elementary school, the teacher came into the classroom. Um, I am I I am going to teach. Um, uh, it was a it was a lady. Um, so the teacher said, um, "Hello, my name is Hoshino," and uh, she drew herself and she wrote Hoshino. She spelled in Japanese and she said, "All right, everybody, write my name on your notebook." So everybody did that, and I thought, "Right." I can draw a star because uh, Hoshi means a star. So, um, so I, I draw a notebook because uh, you know Hoshi no Hoshi means star. So I thought, right? I thought um, she would be happy. So um, Mrs. Hoshi no looked around and she came to my desk and I looked at my notebook and I was really excited. I thought she was going to be happy. And she hit me. She was so upset. And I was shocked. I just, I was speechless. And uh, everything went dark. And I didn't understand why she was angry. Why, why, why is she angry at me? And uh, I literally lost my voice there and then. But not, on, not only that, I, I I couldn't do what everybody else could do. And uh, so Miss Hoshino called my parents to school. So uh no he, he can't he can't be in a normal class. Um so he needs to move to a special needs class. Um so she said to my mother, he he can't do what everybody else can do. He's causing a problem. I don't think he can go to a good school and probably um, there is not going to be a good employment for him. And uh, my mother was shocked. She thought, oh my God, my son is stupid. And that, I mean, it was traumatic to say the least. So my spiritual journey began there. I, I was I was a social outcast. So um, it was really hard. I was in pain, but didn't know why. Why? Why am I in so much pain? I didn't understand. But as uh, as Miss Miss Hoshino predicted, I didn't go to a good school or didn't get a job. So I decided to paint a car and uh, go on to travel around Japan. And then, when I was twenty one, that was uh, nineteen eighty nine. Uh, China had this uh, Tiananmen uh, incident. The Berlin Wall fell, and the bubble economy bursted. In Japan, uh, J Japan bought uh, land all over the place, and China uh, sent an army to kill young people in Germany. Uh, they uh, uh, draw a line. In uh, in a country, uh, and I, I can't believe this. I thought this world lacks what lacks love, and I uh, started to uh, write love on the street. It was a bit like a Banksy that was thirty years ago. And I uh, tried a different jobs in Tokyo. I wanted to create something using my own hand. I worked as an assistant to a photographer and worked in restaurant and bar at night. As a bartender, uh, you have no train after work. And the bar. I needed to uh, sleep in a bar and uh, started to uh, 
uh, ride a bike, um, oh, motorbike. Uh, I clad myself with the black leather. I was riding a Harley Davidson. And something happened to me. Life-changing experience. The bartender boss said uh, he's going to travel across the U.S. And the cameraman I worked for um, suggested that he should go and take photos. And uh, I decided to go to the U.S. with them to help them. And I saw the light and the shadow of modern civilization. A big experience. I traveled from Los Angeles with hippies on, on a motorcycle. Uh, Rocky Mountains to Colorado and then up north to Canada. South Dakota. There was a small town and the bikers got together there. It's a small town. Uh, it was a bit like a Woodstock, uh, a gathering of bikers. I was surprised. Even if you are outcast, out misfit, you can build a community. You you build a, your own place. Then I was taken to a village of uh, Native Americans, which changed my view. I went to a reservation. Uh, of uh, the Sioux tribe. They have no idea of uh, uh, a country, what, what country is. They call themselves Sioux. And no, they call, didn't call Americans. Sioux means people. Navajo means people. Apache means um, people. I knew in Japan. Uh, for them, I knew is people. People without uh, letters or characters, they have no idea of uh, a country. We are people living on the earth. I was surprised to hear that and I was touched. There's no idea of ownership. When you when I went into the village, your, your belongings are people's belongings. People's belongings are yours, and the people helped each other. Native Americans were segregated and looked down upon. Um, five years of uh, uh, disrespect. Respect. But uh, uh, these people, I met Native Americans in the reserves. They had, uh, they have uh, uh, pride in themselves. Why? Why can they live like that, with the high pride, with the uh, five hundred history of of uh, res disrespect? Because everything, every life connected is connected to each other. And uh, Mita Koyaksin is the spiritual tradition. When I was traveling with uh, Native Americans, uh, they point uh, up. Why, why do you do that? Look up. A small eagle uh, is uh, flying around in the sky. You can't see it. See it. Why? Why do you know that? I feel it, he said. Don't you feel it? He said. I was so shocked. I'm living, but I'm not feeling the earth. People should have the ability to feel the earth. But uh, we lost it, the feeling, because we wanted civilization and we destroyed the earth. We need to start. I need to start my life by feeling the earth. There's an idea of vision quest. 
among the Native Americans. By growing from a child to adult, uh, there's a ritual, and uh, you have to go to, into a forest, into the mountains. You you have a conversation with yourself and with nature, and you find your mission, your own mission for life. Once you found it, you come back to your family. If you can't find it, you don't have to come back. With all you find your own vision, your mission for your own life, for, for life. You do it alone. You have conversation with yourself and with your nature, with nature. In Japan, the Japanese society, I didn't manage to live well, but I find it. But I have no ability to go into the forest, forest and survive. So I did my own vision quest in my daily life. Seven years later, I earned my money doing odd jobs and uh, in Tokyo and I went uh, out to travel in Asia. Even uh, a person like myself, I should have a role on earth and I got to find it, Nepal to Europe. I traveled like a native person. I listened to the earth. Like a Native American, your soul, your body, your mind, with, your, with all that, you listen to the message from the earth. That's what I did. Uh, from Nepal, I went to India. And in, the, in India, South India, I, I experienced universal abundance. Um, from this uh, 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 small oven, uh, they, they cook the home food. Um, this lady uh, made uh, home cooking, which is so delicious and nourishes your body and soul and make, make me happy. That means that uh, you have good agriculture, uh, a beautiful landscape. That means you have your community and tradition there. Everything is connected, interconnected. So, uh, throughout the six million years uh, from the birth of people, we have been doing, it, doing that. And this is the universal abundance. And, and children with beautiful eyes. And how these eyes are shining. I want to create a society just like that. So um, I got interested in, became interested in education. And also um, I stepped into desert for the first time in my life in Rajasthan in India. So Japan is full of, it's, it's rich in water. There's drinking water everywhere. So um, I never experienced shortage of water as such. But when I traveled through the desert, I experienced the suffering. So environment without trees, environment without green, how hard it is. And I learned myself. But um, the global warming is turning the earth into desert. So every second, greenery as big as a football ground is disappearing on this earth. Uh, we know it, but we still don't stop this activity. We don't stop this traction, especially in the Amazon area. But this massive problems on Earth, um, I didn't know what to do with it. 
And I went to Turkey, a city called Ephesus, and I saw these uh, Greek ruins. Uh, this is a library from the uh, ancient times. And I learned that civilization can disappear. Greatest buildings, greatest architecture, greatest politics, government, everything will disappear eventually. For Greek, India, Mesopotamia, um, but not just the civilization, but I, I realized that the entire earth is being destroyed. But the issue is just too big for one person to even visualize. So um, I moved on to Europe. From Greece, went to Italy. And from Rome, I went up to north. And I saw a vision. And uh, with a really nice coincidence, and, uh, I stayed in a farm owned by Dario. This uh, bearded man is Dario. He wasn't wearing shoes, and there was no electricity in his house. So um, he was using candles and using um, disused timber. So um, he was using the reclaimed wood. But it was beautiful, so, so beautiful. So I, I, I knew that I saw a beautiful life. His farm was a sculpture. His words were poetry and working was a joy. And every day was a story. How creative is that? So living is art. And my, so creating your own life and is enriching your life further and uh, it will bring happiness, and peace, joy and beauty to the world. You don't take anything from anyone. You don't destroy anything. You create your life. You create a life. And you can make your life and the world you live in a better, better place. So uh, I didn't know what to do to help the world, but I decided, right, I have to build life. So, and Dario said, well, actually, I learned this lifestyle from Japan. So you should go to a Japanese countryside. So our society takes takes away, takes things from countries in the south, from the nature, take from the weak, and that's that's what's building this society, but it's not sustainable. We have to circulate. And uh, but the countryside in your country can teach you that. And that's that, that's that what they what that's what it taught me. And uh, I didn't fit in the Japanese society and I was traveling the world. Um, the Dario in Italy told me, I mean, I was still wondering, but I was traveling. And then still I thought, well, it's a good word, but I kept traveling and I went to London. And uh, I was still not sure, shall I go to Scandinavian countries or I could go to Africa or I could go to North America, South America? No, I am going to the countryside in Japan. Just like Dario said, I'm going to the countryside. So from London, I went to, I flew to Kyoto and went to Shikoku, Gunma, Nagano, Kyushu, went to Yakushima and went farther down south in Japan. And I ended up in where I live now, Kamga village in Chiba. So it's uh, two hours away from Tokyo, 30,000 people live there, and uh, the population is decreasing by 300 people every year, but this is common uh, in everywhere in Japan. 
on the east side. Uh, we've got the Pacific and uh, tourism and also um, fishing is popular. And you can see this scenery from the ancient times. You don't see the electricity poles. It's, it really is like um, what it was in the ancient time. I was moved and I wanted to move there. In 1999, I was 31 years old and 24 years after that Hoshino incident and I felt like I found a place that I belong. It's just absolutely beautiful. So all the farmers took um, all the last thousand years, all these farmers from generation to generation, they preserved this beautiful landscape and the field. But there are many, there were many problems. So I moved to this um, farmhouse, a uh, 200-year-old farmhouse, and I started renovating. Back in the 1990s, there was no internet, so I went to the library and I borrowed out books on architecture and I tried my hands on rebuilding the house. But the great thing about Satoyama is that uh, all the materials that you need are around you. There are bamboos that you could make the frames and you can use straw to make the uh, plastering material. So I never done anything like it. I was a novice, but you, I mean, I could do it. And also I started building a community. There's a local currency, our money. I created that local currency. There's no coins, there's no banknotes. Um, it's like a book. And uh, by words of mouth, it started spreading. And uh, it started with 10 people, and now there are 200 people in that community. So uh, this is my son. He actually he's, he's sitting in the audience when he was smaller. Um, so once you start building communities and everybody helps each other, some, something that you can't do on your own, say like growing rice, building house, you can do it with uh, the community. By doing that, so you can turn yourself from consumers to producers. So uh, citizens, in other way, we are consumers, especially urban dwellers. Um, everything is money, everything is currency, food, water, anything. You need money to get these necessities. But you can actually create, produce things by using your hands. So you can actually live in a true way. But obviously, you can't make everything 100% yourself. But only a small part of it, you can actually do it. Instead of buying, you can actually make. It was a bit like a hippie commune because we have the internet and uh, we have transportation. You can move around and you can connect with other people when necessary. Uh, we have uh, this uh, network community uh, who share the value. Uh, we were not uh, uh, limited uh, uh, like the traditional communities. Uh, so uh, this is a new type of community where you can connect with people when necessary. While I build community with uh, new people coming to the uh, local uh, area, uh, we have uh, I built a network with uh, local uh, people because we had an issue of uh, different values with uh, uh, villages. Uh, our village has uh, uh, 
uh, gathering of all villagers on the 28th day of month. I said, oh, wonderful village. It's beautiful, I said. But uh, the elderly, uh, uh, the elder of the community said, uh, he was upset. What nonsense you say. Uh, uh, we've uh, lived here, uh, we've grown up here, but we never thought uh, this is a v- beautiful village. Uh, there, are, there are no young people here. We uh, said, uh, go to the city, uh, get a good job, uh, go to a good um, university, uh, don't be a farmer, don't uh, uh, produce rice. They said that. Uh, the elders experienced uh, the Second World War. Tokyo was burnt, and uh, uh, two uh, atomic bombs were uh, dropped on our land, and uh, uh, Japan was decimated by the U.S. And uh, uh, the elderly people believed in growth. For that, they needed to abandon agriculture and uh, go to the city. If I uh, uh, if I uh, uh, it, it's difficult to explain that because uh, uh, because I don't didn't want to deny their values, but they were four people who uh, acknowledged my values, uh, four elderly people, and uh, there was moments I was accepted. This village has very few young people. Yes, we um, drive them away, they thought. But they said, I sort of understand you. When they were small, uh, they were really poor, no electricity, no oil, no telephone, no car. Uh, There were cows and uh, horses working on the field. It was so difficult, but we helped each other. On a fine day, we worked out in the field. When it's raining, uh, we were drinking during the day, and uh, we played music, and we danced. Every Each month, we had festivals. Uh, we meet uh, uh, gods and celebrate our life. That was really rich. It was a bit like a... a there was a lot of uh, time uh, sto- not stolen by uh, time stealers, as described in Mihail Endes' uh, Momo. We are so uh, convenient. We have a convenience in modern life, but uh, we're so, people are so busy. But we can't go back. I learned how to live in the village from the elderly people, how to make coal, um, how to uh, grow rice, a thatched roof. The Satoyama culture, uh, it's a design with a designer. Anonymous farmers uh, uh, design this such an abundance of uh, creativity. And I uh, started uh, this rice terrace scheme, owning scheme uh, with the elder people. If there aren't people in the village who can uh, do this, then we can work with the people in the city and they uh, then I can bridge the village and the city. Uh, and the terrace tile, uh, rice fields was the big, the biggest negative in the village. So uh, hourly um, earning of uh, a farmer is said to be one pound in Japan. If you grow rice in uh, terraced fields, you don't make money. Uh, the uh, terraced rice fields was a, a symbol of negativity and the suffering, but it attracts people now, a lot of people now. 
so nev- negative beca- became positive. The biggest negative in the village became the positive. I was primary school dropout, but now I take a pride in myself and my work. So negative can become positive. That's what I learned in this village. The Tokyo metropolitan area has a population of 40 million people, and I wanted to make a home for them. This village, Kamanuma Kita, an uh, anonymous village, uh, people uh, attracts people, and uh, uh, 1,000 people want to live there now. And uh, actually, people started to live in this uh, village, including foreigners. Uh, foreigners are moving to uh, this village. I have a friend uh, who, American, who moved here. He used to uh, live in an uh, uh, expensive ha- uh, house in Tokyo, uh, 5,000 5, uh, pounds worth of uh, rent. Uh, he used to work in IT, but he is now translation. And he gained time and friends, uh, huge space and the nature. Uh, elderly people were surprised. Mr. Hayashi, this village was attacked by uh, American uh, jet fighters. We were killing each other, but uh, uh, I never imagined uh, with a uh, foe, uh, working with a foe to uh, grow rice. And my American friend was uh, so happy to hear that. 20 years on, opponents who used to kill each other now working on rice fields together in a very friendly manner. Maybe uh, 70 years on, Israelis and Palestinians uh, were uh, become very friendly. Russians and Americans, you never know what's going to happen in the next 70 years. The world could be a lot better place in uh, 70 years. That's what I can imagine in this village. And I took over uh, more uh, terrace rice fields and we started uh, to work with uh, companies, uh, Muji, uh, more city dwellers to ha- started to visit uh, uh, my village. I don't talk about a sustainable uh, society to uh, the visitors from cities. We share what is a good food, enjoyable time, joy with them. Beyond that, I think we have sustainable society. Society, Sustainable society is not about uh, tolerate something difficult. It's about uh, uh, comfort, beauty, and joy. And our country, for for a long time, we our borders were closed. And in Meiji era, we opened the country. And the, after the Second World War, we want we were learning from the West. We learned the culture from the West. But just like Dario, a farmer in Italy, taught me. Um, when everybody's coming to the countryside, urban people are coming to the countryside, I think people are rediscovering our own identity. We see our nature, culture, tradition, knowledge. We 
are rediscovering what we have and we weren't aware of. But you can't go back in time. But it's not about that. We just have to treasure what's good about the tradition and then we still have to look to the future and creating a new design. That's what we have to do. Um, I learned the uh, skill by the elders and uh, this is a new arrangement, a modern take on the traditional design. And again, this is something that we share with the uh, urban dwellers. In 2016, Muji started this future work style. So um, they created this rice terrace office on the top layer of the rice field. This is uh, Yoshihara Tsukamoto. Um, so in the people are commuting in a massive office area in a crowded from um, commuting in a crowded train. Well, this is a new way of working. There's no crowded train, there's no traffic jam. You can hear the birds singing in your office. And when you've got time, um, you can actually make rice. Um, so there's an office, there's a um, chill out area on the ground floor. But after the pandemic, um, this sort of became a norm. So um, we are updating this office. So now we've got Wi-Fi, we've got electricity, and we've got kitchen in this office. But not ev I don't. I don't think everyone has to move to the countryside. Um, there, there's a role to play. There's things to do in the cities. So you can actually commute to the countryside from the city. So this is um, what they called Muji Hut. Um, there are 20 huts and uh, they sold 20 huts in the neighboring village. So and I'm also making small houses. So um, people who can actually commute from the urban area to the countryside and living in and uh, having these houses, offices, places to go. Um, they say that there are no jobs in the countryside, but we have to, we, we can redesign local resources and create jobs. For example, um, with Muji, we are creating sake called Nihonshu, which is a Japanese sake. Sake called sake. So um, we are taking over all these rice fields that nobody's using anymore. Uh, we started the natural sake project. So everything is organic. It's called Terada Honke, um, working with them. We created this brilliant sake. And this sake is served in a Noma in Copenhagen. It's absolutely delicious. And uh, we are working with universities, Chiba Universities, Tokyo Institute of Technology, Meiji Universities, Tokyo City University, Kanagawa University, Jochi University, Tokyo Art College. Um, so um, it's cross field, cross departments, collaboration, collaborations are happening. And, and then uh, this huge typhoon hit the village in 2019, so four years ago. This massive typhoon hit our village. Uh, wind speed 50 meters power, and the Chiba never had anything like it before. So chapter three, so uh, after this, we started this um, small earth. This is, this is my house. So you, 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 you can see my, how 
destroyed my roof. So uh, the wind swept through my entire house. It was like a bombing. It was like a wartime. But from there started a project called Satoyama Commons. So um, after the typhoon, we have to rebuilt the village and there were people who donated money also people came here to help us so it was all these people who are in the community commuting to this village from the cities so um, so um, one of the three houses that were empty we turned it into our office and uh, started a commons project and uh, again the finance it was backed by a finance from the people who are commuting from the urban area to the village. So, um, so we created this um, organization called Small Earth. So we started buying land and uh, made a co-op. So it's not my property, it's shared by everyone. I heard from uh, a Native American, we are borrowing the land from the earth. So we have to get the land back to the earth. Nobody owns the earth. So I decided to live by that. This land is everyone's land. There's great big mountains and uh, houses. So um, I don't have to pass it. I don't believe in the personal inheritance. I could pass on to my son, but it, it shouldn't be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And also uh, the house that was destroyed, um, the governor's house. So Mr. Tsukamoto was a professor of Tokyo Institute of Technology, is a tech, uh, professor. So we started redesigning and renovating the place with zero waste. And the earth from Satoyama, stone, bamboos, straws, grass, old timbers. We collected everything and then started renovating the house. So this is the, our community kitchen. So um, I, I, we, we set this, a uh, thousand yen, a month. Do we? Do you want to share? Do you want to be a member of this community? So um, there are 200 people in this community. So um, that we are utilizing, we're using this space. It's a communal space, and lots of different people came here. We have an organic market called Awa Nova. Every month on the day of the new moon, um, everybody brings in their produce. And uh, we have a fashion show, so designers came into the village. So we did a fashion show in the rice field. Hiromi Suzuki, a designer, um, she's, she created this brand to stop human trafficking in Laos and Thailand. So she created jobs for the people using organic cotton, organic linen, and buttons are made of woods and bamboos. No, no metals, no zips and all the monies are going back to the education in the local area in Thailand and Laos. So um, this is, again, circular economy. And uh, she is working with us now and creating um, clothes for the farming.
we started uh, restoring uh, thatch roofs. Uh, Yui is the name for in Japan for working together. Yui was all lost, people said, in the village. Community is aged. Uh, uh, those who, who fetched the roof, uh, fetched us, uh, they retired, and everything was lost. Uh, there's no read. You, you can't make it again. Then why don't we uh, make an appeal on the internet? Crowdfunding, uh, wisdom, manpower come, come from all over Japan. Uh, this is a new UE. And from all over Japan, a lot of people came here. Uh, but half of them were women. Surprisingly, when you try to uh, um, preserve Japanese uh, tradition, um, uh, ladies are more in, uh, interested in, in these moves. Uh, from Kobe, uh, this uh, Mr. Ikuyasata came here uh, to teach the technique. Uh, 3.6 million yen was raised uh, through crowdfunding, but uh, it was used to uh, restore the west side of the roof. And we, we need to raise more fund to complete the work. Uh, old warehouse was turned into uh, a gallery uh, a famous singer, Tokiko Kato, took part in this activity to uh, create a new gallery. Every year, to celebrate the harvest, um, we have uh, uh, drum uh, musicians. Uh, they, they came to live in the village. And we started the Satoyama School of Design. Uh, this is joint effort by four universities. Uh, they come uh, to the village in the Kawashima, to the uh, Metropolitan University uh, Institute of uh, uh, Technology of Tokyo. And these, uh, this is a group to uh, up. Uh, uh, realize a circular economy on the earth. By learning the circular economy in Satoyama, uh, we, this is a project to uh, solve uh, challenges in local communities, uh, which will be implemented in one year, two years, and these young students goes out, go out in the society and work in cities to design new new uh, cities. This is a new tiny house, uh, Tekitekian, which was uh, built this year. We use the earth, wood, and old materials in the area. Everything was done by the students. Uh, they spent one year to complete the project. There are a number of uh, educational projects, uh, not only universities, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, uh, kindergarten to university students are involved in these projects. Microtourism projects have started. Uh, agricultural lifestyle richness of it and the beauty of it is the uh, the the um, that they come to see in this uh, uh, more people want to come and live in this village after pandemic with the with Atelier one we uh, are, are creating a collective house 
and new work opportunities. Fashion designers, architects, university and companies, we work with them uh, to uh, create a circulating culture. Kanemakita has only 25 households. This small village is a small model for the circular economy. It would be difficult to change 30,000 people in Kamogawa um, or whole Japan because there are complex uh, picture. Uh, political, economic, and uh, probably diplomatic issues involved. So uh, that's why we are looking at looking small. Small earth uh, can turn into a new lifestyle and circular economy, circular culture. We have uh, capitalism on the base, based on which we have uh, education, politics, economy, um, capitalism. You must grow, but uh, people living on the earth is based on, on nature, agriculture. That is our base. Agriculture and nature, they just grow. It goes circular. And we must align ourselves to it. Otherwise, there's a destruction. So once again, we want to base ourselves on nature and agriculture. And we have on top of it, we must design our new society Modernity made uh, uh, divisions, uh, uh, city and uh, rural area, people and nature, people and people, but we want to reconnect everything for us to live together. Chapter 4, what's important in the in doing these activities? Uh, so, a thousand people visiting this village. Uh, we don't want to see problems. We want uh, uh, people living together. How can we achieve that? Uh, I think each person is important. Each person is a leader. Uh, I want to create that sort of um, um, place to achieve that. Everyone is important, and everyone has a role. If you can't do anything, you don't come up with a reason. You look for a reason why you can do that, because people have uh, unlimited creativity. I have no academic background, no money, uh, no connections, I have nothing, but I'm doing whatever I want to do. If you don't money, why raise your money? If you don't have wisdom, how you can have access to wisdom? No manpower, why? Is there any way you can access manpower? You find a reason why you can do that. and use a simple language that everybody can understand, elderly people, grandma, granddad, a large corporate president, university lecturer, school children, high school kids, words, a language that everybody understands, no jargons, no complicated words, but I don't have a proper education myself. 
And, and my teachers are the nature. The, the nature teaches me everything. The nature is diverse, open, everything is connected, it is fair, and everything is related to everything, no waste. There's a wholeness and it's perfect and permanent. And this is what's creating the earth and this is what's creating the entire universe and the space. But somehow we can't do it. Humans can't do it. We should learn from the nature. So look around you. It's free. You are looking at the truth and the nature teaches you the truth and you don't have to pay a thing. Also, um, what's important to me is, um, I think it's important is that uh, um, no ego, uh, be transparent. A place everybody can shine, um, a place like that do not need a strong leader. I'm happy to be transparent. Everybody is a hero in their own way. A strong, powerful leader and a strong thought. It, certainly these things have power, but there's always a danger to go with. Say it could turn into a cult or hippie communes or organized religion, maybe. Um, but the place where everybody can go, everybody can be a hero, everyone can shine, be the best of themselves, and somewhere the place that everybody can be themselves. And the connection, and the human connection will create such an amazing thing. Ants can be ants, and they don't have to become an elephant. Uh, clouds are clouds, elephants are elephants. Um, you are you. A society that you can be yourself, and uh, that's that's uh, that's uh, that's liberty, that's freedom. It's easy to say, but I don't think it's impossible. So that's and everybody is an artist in a society like that. Remember Joseph Boyce, the um, German artist. We are creating brilliant life, brilliant society, and brilliant earth. We are creating these things, and everyone is an artist like that. And I want to live like that. I aspire to, to live like that, and I hope that the society will become just like that. So um, I, I happen to be in this um, small village, but you can do it in London, you can do it in Tokyo, New York, Delhi. Anyone can do this anywhere. Um, you can start where you are, creating a better place, creating a better community, create, creating a better society. A small world, small dots will be eventually connected and become one line, one dimension. We can, we can start at the grassroots and small. You can start small, but it will become connected slowly and hopefully gradually. And that will change the economy and the entire society and the politics. So that's why I wanted to um, create a beautiful village. And that I hope that will lead to create a better and beautiful earth. As a result, so the earth still have got massive issues, so many issues, but I just hope that it will become more peaceful, sustainable, and beautiful. I hope I can be a small help to that.
So um, that's what I'm doing in a little village. And that's my vision and uh, life work and a peace activity. It's an art activity and environmental activity, political activity, and uh, it's a life to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we are running out of time a little. Um, just want to be brief. So this is an architectural school, and so um, I would like to ask two questions regarding architecture. The Satoyama concept of Satoyama. Um, if you are Japanese, um, it's you, you know you can sort of understand the concept. Um, this word, um, there are, I'm sure there are people who have heard it before, but if you could elaborate, um, what's Satoyama to you? What, what's the concept and how it works, how it functions, uh, how it, it exists? And if you could uh, let us a little bit more of an explanation. Um, Satoyama, the word Satoyama. Um, so I, I use this Japanese word, and uh, um, we use this word in English as well. So 70% of Japan is forest. 70% is forest. And uh, a thousand years ago, we started agriculture. So we uh, we created field. So we um, had this 30% to um, turn into a field. So Sato is a land where people live. So behind it is Satoyama, and further up is Okuyama, the deep mountains. That's that's where um, gods live and animals live, so they should be left untouched. So the forest behind the village is Satoyama. So to manage that forest in a sustainable way, so don't turn that into a desert. So that's the culture of Satoyama. As I said earlier, um, it's a design without designers. So um, people in the village created that, spending the last thousand years making it, the landscape. But it's not about space, but it's about architecture and a community and how, how the community functions and the straw roof and how they create the design, um, food, living, everything. So the, the circular system was created in, in, in Satoyama. So that, that, that itself is a Satoyama. So you, you say nature, but Satoyama is man-made environment, right? Yes, that's right. So, so we got, got, got say charcoal, the technique, um, the smoke. When the smoke comes up, the smoke actually clean, cleanses the mountain, cleanses the air. And I asked why, why that is. In Satoyama, using, so we create a kiln. In, in the mountains, uh, so then they created charcoal using the leaves, fallen leaves. So that was um, energy, created energy in the village and also income. So the kiln was moved around the forest, cutting down trees and leaves, and then go back to where it started. What? So there are new buds coming in and the new trees coming in. So we circulate around and um, not killing the nature. So people are going into the forest, the smoke comes out, so the animals wouldn't come down to the village. So um, we can, both animals and people can coexist. And also we are not destroying the nature, we are preserving the nature. And uh, yeah, I was really um, astounded in a very good way. In a village, so you can see the relationship, right? It's clear to see, I, I imagine, 
and your activity. What's amazing about what you do is you connect that with the urban area. So the cities, you treat cities as Satoyama. Yes, exactly what you said is correct. Uh, you have capitalism and sustainability, sustainable society, and you want to link them together. Uh, in order for, for you to do that, you need to change the city, and the city must be Satoyama. Um, and there are uh, lots of companies and the uh, university coming to this village because they want, when, when they design um, uh, cities, they look at the Satoyama for inspiration. Uh, we have lots of researchers. researchers. Uh, the buildings they design in Tokyo is a bit like more Satoyama. What, what do you mean by that? For example, the Metropolitan University of Tokyo, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor, so, uh, this, she, he has uh, the, his own studio. Uh, and uh, they, he uses uh, um, foundation, but in cities, you, you put uh, stones on top of it, you have uh, your foundation, so that uh, uh, microverbs can live under the stones. And he tried that in, uh, to in the center of Tokyo. But he, he used that uh, uh, method in modern uh, architecture. Uh, Professor Kashio from Meiji University uh, is uh, renovating buildings in Tokyo. As, um, he collected uh, waste materials from uh, uh, city buildings. Um, he also uh, used earth, uh, uh, cover, covered uh, concrete buildings with uh, earth, uh, organic way. So uh, these researchers uh, come to the village uh, with uh, um, students, and he, they take uh, the inspiration from the village back to uh, the city and the Muji. Um, they, they do business in the city, basically, but they are creating a new business in a rural area. So they combine uh, the challenges in the uh, city and uh, rural um, things. Because I had uh, old house, I found it in the village, and the Muji came to uh, run this house as a Airbnb establishment, which is uh, very popular now. Uh, uh, this property is booked up for the next six months, and they have guests uh, from uh, the city, and they, they can experience agriculture. Uh, so it's a, a circular in terms of economy and architecture. And it's important to link up uh, uh, the village and uh, the city. Another question I have is that uh, you have these uh, ideas and inspirations, and they take them back to the city uh, to implement the idea in the city. It's understandably uh, that 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 should work, but um, but. Uh, there may be resources uh, that can be applicable in the village. And they can perhaps uh, bring them back to the city and they produce something in the city and the, the pro production, the what is produced in the city can go back to the village. Is this possible in the future? Um, I'm sorry. Um, a slightly uh, abstract in my question. What do you think? That, that's quite possible, I think. So linking the city and the uh, rural area, and by doing so, uh, the resources from the rural area can be turned into uh, some value, and by updating it, that can be uh, can have uh, some value in the city, 
and that this can be a, a business that can be um, uh, circulate in economy. And uh, this is actually what uh, Muji is trying to do, I think. Uh, we can perhaps uh, ask questions from the audience. Anybody want to ask Harish some questions? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna uh, um, ask uh, in English, but um, ah, sokka. Kite nai desu ne. So the villagers, uh, uh, you, you you may might have been conflicts with them. We probably we have uh, some of the issues. Difficult here. Uh, uh, for outside person. Maybe you're not an outside person because you are from Chiba, but to go in and to work with the local team or local people who must be uh, suspicious of outsiders and and uh, you know however bright your idea is for uh, for someone with a bit more power a bit more economic sort of resources a bit more education to come in and tell the local people what to do it must be very difficult for anyone to do, and I'm curious how you gain the trust of the local people. This is a very good question. Local people, how, how you get on with them without doing so, it's impossible to do a project with 1,000 people coming from a city. Uh, we uh, build a good relationship with the local community, local village people. In the 90s, uh, people migrating from the, uh, the city was uh, uh, handled as uh, an AET, the stranger. So there's a big gap between the, uh, what we value. So it, before getting uh, uh, them to acknowledge me, uh, I took time. And then uh, before I actually started uh, my activities, what I thought was important was not to fight, don't argue, um, because we, there's a difference in our uh, thought. Uh, you, you may be um, uh, harassed, but still you don't want to fight with them. For example, what happened was uh, uh, an older man was upset and uh, I hate people from the city. I don't trust them from, uh, I don't trust the outsider. He said that. But still, you, you don't want to argue with him. You have your own way of life and uh, you get yourself accepted by them. But this old man, a few years later, said, I can only accept you. You don't want to fight, but uh, you will be accepted. So you don't have, a, 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 you, you don't fight, and uh, you accept different opinions and different values. So this agriculture village has um, people, and um, he lived 80 years in there. Quite understandably, understandably, he cannot accept me soon. You uh, accept different different way of thinking. That uh, you, it's not about uh, killing yourself. Um, you, you still value yourself but not fighting. That, that's what I have done. Anybody else wants to ask any questions? Hello. Um, what do you think about uh, materials, uh, especially maybe in the city where there's not such a close source of materials available? But 
But in Satoyama, it's, it's, it's rich in nature. But obviously, in, in the urban area, it is impossible to get as many as. But there are so many waste in the urban area. So you can actually reuse them using technology, using designs. We can actually reuse these waste materials. Um, but I think the cities can do better. Um, designers can work on that. Architects probably can work on that. Um, you, you, they, they can be more creative than, um, than anybody else. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It was so um, touching. Feeling somehow I, my my question is might be a bit abstract, but um, small earth is kind of concept. But, um, when do you know that it's it's become too big? Uh, so when, how do you know when it's become too big? Um, the network relationships, um, pop, it's, it's not about the population, number of people joining in, but say, for example, Muji joined in, so the small earth became bigger. So, you know, you, you're saying small, but how, how to keep that smallness? Um, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, in any, any anything that I do, um, balance is important. Say so corporate, they want profit, they need profit, and that's their aim. So if they're th they, they are too strong, that would cause imbalance in the village. So um, it's really, it's, it's a fine line there. So um, corporates, universities, we collaborate with them. But what, what, what's important, the, the, the core, is the community of this village and the people living there. So they, their lives have to be enriched and also sustainable. And uh, they are the main subject, if you like, but they, they are the people who are living there. And the universities and the corporates are supporting them, and uh, the villagers are supporting them and they learn from each other, they teach to each other. But but the main thing is the people living there. So the corporates and universities have to understand that concept. And if they couldn't understand that philosophy, um, I tend not to be associated with these sorts, these organizations. But balance, it's, it's, it's a balancing act. So I think that's the framework. So uh, we, we call it the small earth. Um, it's a village with 25 households. And I don't think I want to make it any bigger, any bigger than that. So if anybody else want to copy this, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them to do so. So, um, so we want to create this complete circular society in this um, small village. I think that's... Probably the time is, you know, I'm pushing it. So, yes. Well, thank, thank you very much, Hayashi-san, and uh, yeah.